David, do you have any uh, memories of Tiger Stadium in particular? Heck yeah. What, this what place was freaking awesome. I love this place, man. I, I, it was, you know, aside from the buses getting shook and getting yelled at and nice words, of course, no profanity ever. Um, it was uh, it was the craziest atmosphere I've ever seen. And, and coming back to and covering all the college campuses and stuff, this is the craziest atmosphere. It's just I just love football. It's, it's, it's awesome, man. It jacks me up every time I come here. As a defensive guy, DN kind of outside linebacker type, I guess, when you see the Devin White thing and what kind of impact – is he the, first of all, is he the best linebacker in the country? And second of all, what kind of impact – is he the second – first half going to be missing him and the second half when he comes back, do you think? If you don't think they're missing him, you're out your mother freaking mind. I mean, of course, yes, of course they're going to miss him. Um, I think he's one of the best linebackers in college football. I think he's – He's just, he's very versatile. He can rush the passer, um, very disruptive, uh, decisive, good, just great speed, sideline to sideline, physical. He does, he does everything you want him to do, and you can't replace him. I mean, you can try in any capacity you want, and they're going to try three guys that can, that can, you know, probably rotate in and take a spot, but, you know, Queen probably getting the most snaps. But uh, I, I think, the, pro the trouble for me, the, the question is how many they're down by the time he gets back. And that it might be too late because if you, you guys have seen your offense, it's not setting the world on fire. And I don't expect your offense to go up and down the field with, at will. And if you get down 14 or you get down 17 and you become one dimensional, it's over. I mean, the ball game's a wrap. So I think it'll be important. Obviously, it'll be a huge boost when he comes back. I, I think uh, LSU will take the ball. That you normally would see them kick probably, but I would take the ball and try to eat clock and keep Devin off the field or as much time without Devin, limit that as much as possible. But, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a tough situation to be missing him. What was your Tua opinion of the call? Hated it, sucked, mm -hmm. whatever other adjective you want to throw in there. Tua hasn't thrown a pick yet, and yet LSU leads the nation in interceptions. I mean, something's got to give, right? Yeah, something's got to give. Um, shoot, maybe he throws one. I'd say he might throw one. Um, that's that's the fascinating matchup to me because the kids the kids unbelievable and you can just watch his highlights just at, time after time after time he climbs the pocket so well he, he feels rushes he evades it he's it's really strange to say this but like I have two comparisons for him NFL type guys and it's Russell Wilson and Drew Brees it's like a combination of both that sucks for everybody else I mean that's a that's a lethal combination because he just feels space really well and but also has the improv. So he can play on schedule like Breeze, but he can also play off schedule like Russell Wilson. So it's, it's, uh, it's filthy, but it'll be fun to watch. LSU, you, you call yourself DBU? Let's see what you got. Like, I'm, I'm very curious. Are you going to flinch? Greedy Williams, you going to come up and play press on Judy? You going to follow him around? You know, because those RPOs are miserable to play defense against. And the best way to, to disrupt that is to jam wide receivers, play man coverage, and win on the outside. And we'll see if LSU can do it. You talked about it. You talk about playing in this environment, but as an analyst now, I mean, how, like, is this a game that you guys are excited that whenever you guys get the opportunity to come back into Baton Rouge? I brought my son, yeah. I mean, I bring him a lot, but I'm making sure we come back to this atmosphere. Um, you know, it's just, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I definitely, we definitely love coming to these. I love going everywhere, but, you know, this, you know, this is definitely a little bit different when it comes to just rowdiness and when they play Colin Baton Rouge is just, it's so cool. So I hope we, uh, I hope we get that early and often in the game. You mentioned those RPOs, and you know, everybody knows about the absence of Devin White. Those linebackers yeah. are kind of the target of those things. I think. Um, linebackers like, and safety, yeah. What, what like, do those RPOs do for people who aren't really familiar with that? Well, to be clear, RPOs are cheating. That's what that is. I'm a defensive player, so it's the worst thing in college football. This is why offenses go bananas, because it's a run-pass option, meaning it's a run. So the offensive line blocks run. Well, if I'm a linebacker and I see run, I fit run. So if they're coming at you, you got a fat guy that's 330 pounds running at you. If you don't get some momentum going, you're going to get hit in the face and it's not going to feel good. So if I see run, I have to go play it. Well, now the quarterback just sees you play run and they'll throw a slant right behind you and now it's a pass. So you can't win. I mean, that, that's why it's changed the game up like crazy because it's just – you, you can't believe your eyes and what you see. You have to slow play things more. And now, okay, I give him five yards. Here's what's crazy. This is the stupidest opinion you'll hear all week. I would let Bama run the football. Never have we ever said that in a million years. We, take away the run, make them throw the ball. I would take them running the ball five yards a pop down the field, seven yards a pop down the field, and try to win in the red zone and try to play man coverage where the field shrinks, Tua can't have as much magic, the deep ball doesn't come into play. I know that sounds stupid, 
Um, and it probably is, but I, I'm not very bright. But I just, I'm just telling you, that's the, that's the new reality of RPOs, especially with a guy like Tua, who's the best at running them in college football. That, that being said, you know, lost in the shuffle is Alabama's run game. Does Saban, do you, do you think he plays a little conservative, or does he try to take shots right away? Because we've seen it all year. I mean, they're, they're hitting home runs in the first quarter. But LSU, I mean, the secondary, I mean, we, they think they can match up well one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. I think a lot of people think they can, um, but proving it's another thing. But 21 points per first quarter this season, they've averaged 21 points, Alabama. And, you know, I think, I think they're going to do exactly what they do and make you pick your poison. Because that's what it, – it's, it, it's your choice. In an RPO, you have a choice how you want to play it. it. You have a choice as a defense to sit back and to play, play pass or to, to come up and play run. And, I mean, I'm just, I, I just telling you what I, – I told you what I would do, but I, think, I don't think Alabama is going to change who they are in any game this season. I think they'll be who they are and think they're good enough to, to do so. And, listen – they haven't been tested. They haven't played a great defense yet. We, I want to see this against a great defense. This will be a heck of a lot of fun. I think their average defense they played this year is like 90 in yards per play. So it hasn't been. I think LSU's 24. So it's 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 going to be a fun challenge. It'll be it'll be fun to see if it, it won't be at the highest level we've seen it. Probably it's going to take a few notches down. But then it's just going to be incumbent upon your offense to see if they can make plays. If Edo can lead this team to a win, what does that do for him here as a head coach? I mean, I think this year he's already proven a lot. Now, that being said, I think they're winning closer games. It's, the offense still isn't by any stretch a juggernaut. But um, I think it validates his hiring. I mean, you, you do something like this. Listen, this is a hard feat for anybody. But obviously the record he's been able to do against top five teams and top ten teams has been fabulous. And he's got them believing and playing hard, playing with great energy and effort. But, you know, offensively they're still kind of – Bleh. I mean, they're just kind of okay. They're not great. They're, they don't do anything great, but they don't do. Uh, but they're better at not turning the football over and making mistakes. And Joe Burrow running the football brings a better dimension. I think that's going to be a key tomorrow. Is tomorrow right? Saturday? Yeah, tomorrow will be him running the football. He's going to have to pull the ball and get five yards, ten yards, get some chunks like he has against. He's got some big runs against everybody they played pretty much. Stopping short of a prediction. How, how do you see the game playing out? I don't know how the game's going to play out. I think that's the most – I think this is the most intriguing one. I, 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 here's what I – in the end, and I, I don't care if you hear my prediction or not, I think everybody's going to – everybody's probably going to take Alabama. It's not a newsflash. Um, I think if you – I think they can – I think LSU can limit Alabama to what – under what they've been doing. If Alabama gets 28, and that's a good day at the office probably against Alabama. My question is, can LSU score over 28? And – Against this defense, I don't know if that's possible. I don't know. I haven't seen enough from LSU's offense to, say, to predict that. Were they uh, 23 against Auburn? It was a pretty good defense. And Joe Burrow made some throws that just, holy cow. Like the throw over the middle, the, the slant was between 16 people. It was a post, actually. Between like 16 people that somehow found a way to get in there that ended up being the deciding factor in the game. Um, he's going to have to make some plays like that consistently. LSU jumped from number 25 to number three. At what point this season – did they really catch your attention? I think when they smashed Georgia, when they beat Georgia by 20, that was a, that was a big one. But, I, I mean, Miami opened your eyes and you liked what you saw. And then Auburn was another one. It was kinda, it, it's kind of been the same. It's kind of been like, oh, okay, LSU's good, but how good are they? And, I mean, I, to me, there's clear separation in college football. There's one and two, and then there's everybody else. I mean, it's Alabama. And, by the way, this isn't a newsflash. This is like four years in a row. I mean, <laughs> I think – 19 straight polls, Clemson's been in the top four. 22 of the last 23, Alabama's been in the top four. So I think it's Alabama and Clemson, and then everybody else is trying to get up there, and you got Notre Dame and LSU, and um, they're probably the, the Notre Dame, LSU, probably the next tier, and then you got Michigan, Georgia, you know, those one loss teams after that. So it's just, it's been a fun year of just continue to prove people wrong and continue to play really well. and win close games and then, you know, blow out Mississippi State, you blow out Georgia. I think once you start taking care of business, double-digit fashion like that, I think everybody starts to go, okay, yeah, that's, that's legit. Is LSU the, the best chance to, to take down Alabama in college football? No, Clemson. We just talked about this. I mean, it's, Clemson's got a dirty D-line, and now they got a quarterback that is playing as well as anybody in the country. This kid, Trevor Lawrence, is special. I mean, he makes – He's like a, a, a Rollis Chapman. You know, he's throwing 103. 
you know, he's just spinning the ball out wide, throws that like 18 yard comebacks look like slants for everybody else. And it's just, it's kind of insane. And, I, and you see why Dabo made the switch and they run the football and have balance too. And they've got a dirty D line obviously. And so I think Clemson's the best chance for, um, to win a national title outside of Alabama. But I mean, then you start looking at the short list of LSU and those next teams that are lining up as a log jam.